hello and all that good stuff. My name is Allie. I am the chaotic reader and this is where I talk about book things. So today I'm bringing you my June wrap up. I was going to be bringing you my July TBR, which is what I meant to film today, but I'm waiting for a package to arrive on Friday that has something I need to do my July TBR. Yes, get excited. I'm doing a thing. It's not a super fancy thing. It's pretty simple, but it's just going to be a simple sort of fun way to pick my TBRs each month. So look out for that next week. But for now, we're going to talk about all the books I read in June. Quick note, my son's crib is right here. It's just me and him home today. So if you hear him babbling or just making weird baby gurgly sounds, I mean, it happens. I don't know what to tell you. I'm a mom. Also, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, but let's just go ahead and get into the books I read. So I read seven books in June and I'm sitting here going, oh, I only read seven books in June. But considering how crap my reading year has been and the fact that seven books is still good, we're going to take it and we're going to go with it. And there's police sirens outside because there's always police sirens outside. Let's just, let's get into the books. The first book I'm going to talk about is... A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. This is the first in the Reluctant Royals series. I think there's three of them and I loved this. This was a five-star read for me. It's a romance and it's just so good. It's exactly what I needed this month. A fun romance that still has a lot of depth to it. Depth, depth to it and character development, and more story than just the romance. There was a lot of self-discovery going on in this, and I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed that although the romance was center stage, the romance was amazing, the romance was sexy, it was a good time, there was more to it than just that. And I'm really excited to pick up the rest of Alyssa Cole's books. I suppose I should tell you what the book is about. This one follows Naledi and she is a science student working to get a degree in epidemiology and she keeps getting emails that she is betrothed to a prince and she says fuck that I don't know what you're talking about these are spam emails so obviously she ignores them but it turns out she really is betrothed to a prince and things go from there and it's a good time. I'm sweating. It's really hot in here I had to turn off the fans and like the tiny window AC unit and I thought I'd left it on for long enough that it would be cool in here but as soon as you turn it off it is immediately back to being as hot as it was before you turned it on. So yeah it's it's tiny it's just a teeny itty bitty little like window AC unit and it only kind of works. We don't have air conditioning actually but it's fine. It's only like 90. <laughs> So if things start to get a little shiny, especially in the upper lip area, it's sweat. The next book I'm going to talk about is the Big Chunky Fantasy for the month because there's always at least one and this month I read Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb, which is the second in the Farseer trilogy, which follows Fitz Chivalry and his many adventures. So it took me forever to get through this damn book. I'm pretty sure I started it last month sometime and I didn't finish it until yesterday. So yeah, it's still five out of five stars, but I would only read little bits at a time, like a chapter, two chapters tops. I never read a lot of it at once. I think part of the reason of that might be it's really dense. Uh, there's not a lot of breaks in just horrible things happening to this poor character whom I love so much. He never gets a break. Just when you think something might go well for him, he gets beaten down by the entire world again. And it's just so hard to read sometimes because I've become so attached to this character. These are definitely a staple in the fantasy community and I'm glad to be reading them and I'm excited to read the next one and I'm hoping it doesn't take me another month and a half to complete a book. Moving on, we have The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second in the Broken Earth trilogy. Look at me, I'm actually continuing series this month. Who am I? This was another five out of five star adult fantasy. It was so good and I read it pretty quickly. I was reading it for Queer Blackathon and I knew I wasn't going to finish it in the 48 hours, 
but I did finish it in about 72 hours and it felt really fast, which dense, heavy, intricate, adult fantasies usually aren't quick reads. But for some reason, this really was. I just powered through it. Whenever I sat down, I would read a huge chunk of it. The characters are fascinating. The world is so intriguing. Everything is constantly drawing you in so you just want to read more. And there's queer characters and it's just so casually queer. No one questions the queerness in any capacity. It's just there. And there's so much queerness and diversity. Please read these if you haven't yet. I don't really know exactly how to describe the series other than there are normal seasons and sometimes there is a fifth season in this world where basically the apocalypse happens and humanity has to just scrape by until the season ends and then kind of rebuild themselves and this happens again and again and again except for when it happens this time it seems like it might really be the actual end of the world. I know some people are concerned about picking this up because of the second person perspective that some chapters are written in, it's not as jarring as you'd expect. It takes a little bit to get used to the writing style, but once you do, it's really not jarring or takes you out of the story or anything. It's really done very well. The next book I have to talk about is Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Look at me continuing even more series. Let's just all clap for me. <laughs> because I'm proud of me. So I finished a series with this one. This is the third in the Folk of the Air trilogy and I really loved it. I gave this four out of five stars. I had a really good time with it. I got what I wanted from it and I was surprised by that because a lot of what I'd seen for reviews and people talking about this was that they were disappointed and they didn't get what they wanted out of it. I did. I got exactly what I wanted for an ending from this. I got more of the romance. I got so much of the everyone just being a terrible person all the time. It was, it was a good time and I enjoyed reading it. So I'm not sure what everyone else is disappointed in because I, I personally felt like this was a really good end to this trilogy. Now, this is definitely my worst read of the month and it's an arc, unfortunately. And that is Everyone Knows How Much I Love You by Kyle McCarthy. I think I won this one in a Goodreads giveaway. It comes out, oh it came out, it came out in June. So this is already out. Maybe you'll like it. I don't know. I can't even remember what happened in this at this point. Nothing happened. I felt like nothing happened. We're following two women and they're pretty much messed up friendship and one of them is manipulative and creepy and it's one of those books. Sometimes I really like those books but nothing ever happened here and any of the reveals didn't really feel like a whole lot of anything. It really wasn't that big of a deal. It was just boring. It was boring and there was no payoff and I gave this two out of five stars and it sucked. I don't know. It is an advanced reader's copy and I'm grateful to have gotten a chance to read it. It was not my thing. If it sounded like something you were interested in, you can still pick it up. You might think differently than me. Then I read two ebooks, the first of which was The Anti-Virginity Pact by Katie Wismer. I really enjoyed this. It was an ARC copy via NetGalley and I gave it three and a half out of five stars. It did have its flaws but it's a debut novel. She did have a poetry collection that she wrote. I never did read that one, but I'd be willing to give it a read one of these days. And although this had its flaws, it was a good read. It was a quick read. It tackled some topics and it did a pretty good job of doing so. And this followed, I can never remember character names. I'm sorry. It follows our main character and she was raised in a very religious household. Her parents are very solidly religious. They want her to be religious, but she is basically an atheist. She doesn't want to be religious. She doesn't really want anything to do with it, but she doesn't think her parents would understand that. And her and a friend of hers create the anti-virginity pact, saying that they are going to lose their virginity by the end of the school year because they are seniors. And then a whole bunch of events go from there. It's not just about that. There is more to it than that. It didn't focus specifically on that as much as I thought it would, which I actually enjoyed. I feel like it gave the story a lot more meaning with some of the things it did focus on. This came out on June 16th, which was my birthday, and if you were at all interested, I suggest you check it out.
Then the last book I read was More Than Just a Pretty Face by Saeed M. Masood. This was another ARC copy from NetGalley and I believe it comes out in August. It is a YA rom-com contemporary and I thought it was really good. I gave it four out of five stars. Upon reading some different reviews, some of which I believe are own voices, it seems like some people didn't like the representation in here very much. They didn't think it was as true to heart as it could have been. I think it's an own voices novel, so I am not sure. I can't speak on the representation, so go into it knowing that I'm not sure if the representation is good or not, but I found it a very enjoyable read. We follow Daniel Jelani and he is a Muslim and he is just trying to navigate through life. He thinks of himself as just a pretty face, not very smart, and he has a crush on this beautiful girl. This book tackles the topics of being Muslim in a few different ways and how it is to grow up being that, how kids might think about being that. Again, I don't know if it does these things well, but I feel like it did them in a more lighthearted way and without getting very dark or intense with any of these issues. The romance I know was just adorable. I was smiling through the whole thing. Daniel is so funny and he is just an amazing character to follow. And there's so many themes of self-discovery throughout this book. I thought it was a really good time and I would recommend it. But again, I can't speak on the representation. So that was all the books I read in June. It was a pretty good reading month overall. I have so much going on for July and I'm excited. There's a couple of readathons I'm participating in. I'm vlogging for the first time and I'm doing my July TBR in a new way. So look forward to all of that. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like what I have to offer and comment down below what your favorite read of June was. I will talk to you guys next time.